So after the previous video, you might be asking yourself, why are there so many ways of dealing with alphas? And the answer to that is that alphas can be very tricky and you can have a lot of things go wrong. So there's a bunch of different methods that you can fall back on that if you're finding if one is not working, then you can uh, use another. So let's go on and talk about uh, how sometimes alphas can go wrong. One of the ways that alpha channels can go wrong is when it creates a thing called black fringing. Black fringing is a dark line around your shape that you're cutting out with your alpha channel. Black fringing happens when you're working with pre-multiplied images. And either you've created the pre-multiplied image wrong or the software that you are reading your image into is interpreting your pre-multiplied image incorrectly. So you can see an example of black fringing with this top dot right here, this red dot. It goes from this red color into this dark color and then into this white background where it should be doing what we see in the bottom image where it goes from white and transitions into the background color which is white. So the top one has this black fringing and the bottom one does not. The reason this happens with pre-multiplied images is because when the alpha channel cut out the image it replaced those pixels that got cut out with black. So you can see right here, uh, this image right here, so we're looking at this without the alpha channel applied to it. We're looking at it and we can see that there's black pixels where the semi-transparency is happening. So it fills it with black. So when you get to the end result, you can have this black fringing that's happen happening because the black pixels that are in your image are showing through. So that's in contrast with an unpremultiplied image. So an unpremultiplied image has this red dot, but it's 100% red all the way through, even around the edges. So when the alpha channel gets applied, it's a nice clean transition into the background color. So the big takeaway from this is that uh, although pre-multiplied images might be the most common way of applying alpha channels to your digital images, it is the most unsafe. So it's the most convenient, but probably the least safe way of transferring your transparency over into Nuke. Unpre-multiplied is a much, much safer way of doing that. I did say unpremultiplied images are safer, but you can still have fringing problems with unpremultiplied images. And the reason for this is because of the color space that you're working with. So depending on the studio that you're working for and their color workflow, it's a very high possibility that when you get your image out of Photoshop and into Nuke, that the RGB channels are interpreted with one color space and your alpha channel is interpreted in a completely different color space. And so when your alpha channel gets applied to your RGB image, it's not going to look right. So either you're gonna get some fringing or you're going to get your alpha contracting. And so you're seeing less of the image than, than you intended to have. I'm talking about color space here, but color space is a bit out of the scope of what we're talking about for projections. If you wanna learn more about color space, I would definitely go over to the Matte Painting for Filmmakers website and sign up for the Matte Painting Color Workflow course, where I talk about all about color space and what that means for matte painters. So we have our four different ways of getting our transparencies from Photoshop and into Nuke. And if I were to put this on a safe to unsafe scale, um, and I should say here that the if you know what you're doing and you're doing it correctly and it looks correct in Nuke, then what you're doing is completely fine. But for general purposes, I would say that um, the most unsafe way of doing things is to have an, a, a pre-multiplied alpha. And then that would be to create an ugly image from a pre-multiplied image, and then a unpre-multiplied alpha and a separate alpha. 
I have put this on a scale from safe to unsafe, but there's all these different scenarios and special cases where one of these methods will actually be better than all the, all the rest. And so it's hard for me to tell you that there's only one method and only use that method. You're gonna find as you move forward in your career that at some studios, certain methods are predominantly used and other studios, other methods are used and it's all kind of dependent on their color pipeline and workflow. And so uh, it's really good for you to know all of these methods. And if you have a preferred method, then uh, you can use that. And if it breaks, then you can go to a different method pretty easily. So what I'm gonna be showing you is our project files. We're gonna be going through each one of these methods in depth so that you are comfortable and you know how to use each of these. So this is the project file that we're going to be working with. We have a um, just a standard sky back there, and we have some vegetation that's cut out and put on top. So we have a bunch of different layers of things uh, to use. And so each one of these layers, we're going to be exporting it out in a different way and importing it into Nuke and compositing them all together so that they're all working uh, great together. And so that's what we're gonna be doing in uh, this section of the course.